Okay, scholars. Steps to the revolution. Plot, fiasco, misunderstanding. That's the issue here. I've given you material about this plot and uh, this plot theory. It's in the Declaration of Independence that there's this long train of abuses and usurpations in trending inevitably toward uh, slavery, you know, subjecting us to slavery. Not true. But uh, what we have to see is how people move to the point where they could believe that that was true. We get to the end, 1763 here. Uh, basically, England wants America to participate in paying for the war. Uh, they believe that England should be re able to rely on the wealthy, successful colonies as a revenue source because... You know, they've, they've benefited under the protection of the British Empire. Well, what's happened now is the French are gone, and so the British, the Americans don't need it. They don't feel the need for protection. And so now this is like, well, I don't know, rubs them the wrong way. So what happens is, is let's start right here. This is where, where England starts to say, okay, we've got acts already out there. Uh, we just want you actually to start to pay them. We want to enforce them. And we understand that we keep raising the prices of things when you guys haven't been paying. So we will actually lower duties. You know, the, the, we're going to lower down the taxes, the duties on, on stuff. But you, Americans, have to stop smuggling. See, there's a carrot and a stick. We, we're going to give you this. But you do stop that, and then we can start to make sure this is happening. Now, the, also, the Navy's going to be patrolling here. And if smugglers are caught, they're going to go to Navy courts, Imperial courts, not to the local courts like they had been. And the local colonial courts were very lenient. So the big picture here is that Britain is being reasonable and saying that there are laws in place we want you to start following because but there'd been a long practice of americans being uh you know smugglers americans being um sort of tricky on all these issues and so we're, we're going to sort of this is to bring order to a disorderly system and most of us would think that that's the correct position that a um, imperial government uh, has the right to do. It's the correct way to run things is orderly and by the law. And on top of that is we're going to be reasonable because we're actually going to lower the taxes so that you can start to pay them. Okay. Now the next big thing though, is this quartering act and stamp act. Okay. The quartering act, one of the things that's reasonable from looking at it from Britain's side is that they can't afford to bring all these soldiers home. They can't afford it. Ending a, a major world war is very hard because you bring soldiers home, uh, you've trained them to kill, you've given them weapons, and then they come home and then maybe they can't get their jobs back. They can't find their, their place in society. And so then you've added a very violent and potentially violent element into society that you can't deal with yet. America's had this problem. We, you know, uh, it's, it's a very common problem in world history is, is let's keep our foreign soldiers foreign until we can actually get the structures of society set up so that we can take them back in and uh, incorporate them fully. So from a world history standpoint, Britain's doing the right thing with this quartering act. However, on the other hand, Britain is not supposed to have a standing army and people are supposed to freely give themselves. These are British traditions that you don't, the empire can't force you to find a place for these soldiers to live. And so that's wrong. And then there's always the sort of background question that gets raised, you know, over a pint of beer, which is like, why are these soldiers here? Uh, the enemy's gone, the French are gone, why don't the soldiers go away? Well, maybe the soldiers are here because Britain thinks of us now the enemy. See, here's, here's that plot. They're, they're thinking something over there in Britain, and they're not telling us the truth. It's 
you know, we, we live in a time of today when there's lots of conspiracy theories out there on, on both sides, the left and the right. And they're just, you know, it's all this sort of talk that someone somewhere is doing something here and we got to watch it. Well, that's what starts with, the, with this, this situation here. They're, they're angry about the paying of these taxes, having to quit their smuggling and that sort of stuff and actually go legal. And then on top of this, you know, the imperial courts are going to start playing a bigger role. And then this military is still hanging around. And the trouble is when you have a military hanging around, you got to give them jobs to do. So like guarding buildings is a military job to do. And so this is where the Boston massacre is going to come from. You got soldiers guarding the building, which is like, what are you guarding it from? You know, but you got to give soldiers something to do. So uh, let's talk about the Stamp Act here. So Stamp Act is another thing where Britain is trying to figure out what is uh, a reasonable tax that the Americans will accept. And as you can see here, this is where James Otis, uh, he writes this book and uh, uses this term, no taxation without representation. And as I talked about in class, there's an issue of like, hey, uh, you guys in America have these traditions in your colonial governments of actual representation direct representation, whereas we in Britain and the empire has always had virtual representation. You know, uh, the parliament has always represented the interests of the American colonies. It's just that you haven't elected us directly as a, uh, a representative. Well, that's no good. You know, so there's, there's talk back and forth about that. And so uh, there comes to be this idea of Okay, you've got these issues of taxes, and Franklin actually, in, he's in Britain as a Pennsylvania emissary. He actually sort of proposes this. Is the Americans are willing to pay their external taxes, just not internal taxes. And so the British start to think of, okay, let's figure out a ways to, to get a type of tax which you Americans will agree to. Uh, this just is not going to work. So the Stamp Act is repealed because there's a concerted effort by a Congress of, of where nine colonies gathered. You know, since the uh, Albany Plan of Union, we have not gathered all these colonies together and we still can't get them all gathered. But let's repeal it. But even, if, even though the British repeal it, the, there's this plot is still out there that what are those British up to? They are reducing us into a debtor class, which has gone the verge of, or pushing us toward slavery. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the Townsend Acts actually try and, and meet colonial standards, you know, and, and they, uh, um, uh, they try and uh, uh, do things that will make things better in the colonies, but there's still little things that sort of flip everybody out, which is governor's salaries paid by Britain, not the colonies. This is going to be all the governors of, Cal of the colonies are primarily loyal to Britain. Here again, this is just scary. Uh, then you have uh, the Tea Party. And what happens is, you know, mobs again, mobs and... You know, there's British troops are there and well, OK, here's mobs and then British troops come out. And so, you know, it's just escalating. No one is really com fully communicating with each other. And a lot of people are sitting around, especially in America, coming up with a conspiracy theory that the British government is actually on a project to uh, destroy the freedom of Americans. So we get to the Boston Massacre, and uh, that's where these soldiers, like I say, are guarding uh, the sort of like uh, state house. The, it's not the state house called then. It's sort of a colony house, a government building in the middle of Boston. And uh, they got nothing better to do. And these are young kids, mostly teenagers and a few older folks. 
And what happens is, is that uh, snowballs get thrown, mobs, and so the soldiers defend themselves. Now, in the Sam Adams, and he's, you know, the real rabble rouser up in the north, he is he, deeply Christian, very smart guy, you know, a uh, very committed, very coherent guy. Uh, but he is going to stand up and, and say the Massachusetts Charter has been destroyed. And that's this painting here. He is pointing at the Massachusetts Charter saying, what about that? Okay. And, uh, and so this becomes sort of legal precedent. Oh my goodness, our charter is destroyed and these were being fired upon by the, uh, uh, the British imperial officers, British imperial forces. Well, as I told you in class, the British decide to allow their army officers and men to be tried in a Boston, local Boston court. Okay, uh, this, is, this is a huge, you know, concession to the idea that you Americans are reasonable and we can be reasonable and let's, let's look at this mob action and, and her horrible thing of people dying, soldiers shooting, see if we can come to some sort of reasonable calming down of that. Well, uh, John Adams, local lawyer, is the lawyer for the British, and he successfully defends the, and the court, local court, decides that it was a mob, and the, the, the uh, soldiers acted out of their own, their own rightful uh, position, you know, their, to protect themselves. Uh, so... You know, things are supposed to get better. But Townsend, Townsend does these stupid things. He uh, keeps the tea tax going. And then you have this Boston Tea Party. Which, you know, everyone gets all upset. And King George is then declares the colonists mutts. Okay, now this has gotten to be out of hand. The king is just upset. These Americans are completely unreasonable. And he sends troops back into Boston. Those troops had been taken out after the, the uh, Boston Massacre and put on, you know, on an island out in the harbor to keep them safe, keep everything calmed down. Now, back to Boston. Well, we're really marching straight to the war now because these Boston people, these soldiers are eventually going to go against Concord and Lexington where the um, Concord, there is a uh, arms... A cache of arms that the Americans are 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 building, and and uh, you know Britain can't allow that. So this is the basic steps to the coming of the revolution, and they are depend upon the building up of a conspiracy theory, uh, a plot theory, that Britain is doing something here to actually intentionally taking away our. Uh, our freedoms. Now, we today, of course, have access to all the British parliamentary records and stuff like this. We have letters back and forth with the principal characters. There was no plot. There was no concerted effort by Britain to reduce us to slavery. The Declaration of Independence is wrong. The, uh, and, and, and John Adams, who's in the midst of this, John Adams will come to a conclusion after especially these coercive acts of 1774, where they close the port and they do different things, this will send John Adams over the top. And uh, his, he and uh, um, his cousin Sam Adams will go down to the, con you know, the Congress and the Continental Congress and start to, to build what will be the arguments of the, of the Declaration of Independence. And John Adams um, is involved, along with Ben Franklin, in writing the Declaration of Independence, along with Jefferson. So that's the sort of basic getting us going there, okay? And so um, you've got this paper there, and they, these are key events, and we will talk about them more as we 
move into the revolution.